Well, come on in, boys and girls. Come on in. Good morning, or should I say good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today. Well, I don't know if you remember who I am, but I am not Miss Magnolia. That's my cousin, better known as Miss Noya. She asked me to come and host for you today. And my name is Merdine Elizabeth Begonia Robinson. But my friends call me Mama Throw. So you can call me Mama Throw. I tell you, I'm just impressed. I'm impressed, y'all. I just, I'm happy because my cousin reached out for me to come and be here with you today. And this is my third time. I tell you that old girl, mm, I thought she had threw me away. I really, really thought she had threw me away. But she didn't forget about her kinfolk after all. <laughs> so I'm happy. I'm so happy to be here. And as you know, I love to attend tea parties. And I'm just coming back from another tea party. And this tea party was the chic blush pink high tea party. But I tell you, when I walked in there and I looked around, I said it should have been called Wear a Patch of Pink Tea. <laughs> because all I saw was patches, patches of uh, pink here and there. Now, I believe I'm wearing a little bit more than a patch, but it might not be blush, but it is my pink. But I tell you what I did. I put a little blush on today, boys and girls. Now, Mama Throat hadn't worn blush in years. But I put a little blush, a little pink blush on my cheeks today for this particular chic blush pink high tea party. But anyways, uh, let's get to it. I'm excited to be able to share a very special story for you today, boys and girls. And uh, I hope you're not hungry because this story is about a special caterpillar. And the title of this story is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Okay? And this is by Eric Carley. Here we go. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and popped out of the egg. Can I tell you what, boys and girls? Let me start over. I started on page two. I guess you're wondering what then happened. Let me start over. Okay, here we go. The very hungry caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. You see that moon, boys and girls? Can you see the moon? And do you see the little egg on the leaf? And there's the moon. Now, page two. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and popped out of the egg came a tiny, very hungry caterpillar. Oh, it's so tiny. Can you see just the weedy, 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 tiny thing? Weedy, weedy, weedy. Let me move my fingers. You see it? The tiny caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, 
He ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. Do you see that whole boys and girls? He ate through the apple. That was Monday. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. You see those two pears, boys and girls? Right here. All right. On Wednesday, he ate through plums, but he was still hungry. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Three plums he ate through. You see those holes? My goodness. He's doing a lot of eating. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry, boys and girls. Oh, that's a hungry caterpillar. See the four strawberries? He's eating a lot of fruit. That was Thursday. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. My goodness. Look at that. Five oranges. A hole in each one where the caterpillar ate. Let's see what he does next. On Saturday. On Saturday, boys and girls, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie. One sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Now, you know that's just too much eating going on. Look at that. My goodness. What do you think happened when he ate all of this? I'm telling you. Do you see that? Do you see it, boys and girls? A slice of cake, an ice cream cone, a pickle, a slice of Swiss cheese, a slice of salami, a lollipop, a slice of cherry pie, a sausage, a cupcake, and watermelon. I tell you, what do you think happened? That night, he had a tummy ache. Oh, I know his stomach was hurting. Oh, when you eat too much, that'll happen. The next day, it was Sunday again. That caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Look at that. See the holes through the green leaf? He ate all through that green leaf and he started to feel better. Look at him walking away. He started to feel a lot better after he ate through that green leaf. Now I tell you what about me, when I eat greens, mm, Mm -hmm. I feel so much better. When I go in that kitchen and put on a pot of uh, turnip greens, it can be mustard greens, it can be collard greens, or cabbage greens. Oh, 
I feel so much better, boys and girls. And then I put a pan of golden baked cornbread hot out the oven on the table and slice it up and, and put some there uh, on the table with my uh, plate of greens. I just have a good old time. You know, back in the day, uh, greens were not good unless you, you ate them with your fingers and you would grab a little cornbread. And You know, I know we have forks and spoons and eating utensils. But there was nothing like eating the greens with your fingers back in the day. Now, I'm not saying go outside. Mama Throat not saying go outside and eat you some leaves so you can feel better. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying, just eating some greens, some vegetables. They make you feel better and they're healthy for you too. But now he was eating a slice of a cake on here. You saw that slice of cake? You see there? That slice of cake right there, I tell you, I don't mind having a slice of cake after I've ate me a little greens. But uh, Mama Throat shouldn't be eating too much cake. So what I like to do is get a slice instead. And what a slice is, boys and girls, is when you have a slice of cake and you take and you slice through that slice. And get you a thin, thin, thin piece of cake. And then it becomes a slice. So every now and then I get me a slice of cake. And I, I, I think that as we are approaching the seasons coming up, we might consider, uh, you know, I'm not going to say y'all. I'm just going to say I better consider doing uh, slices more often. Okay, let me get back to the story, boys and girls. Okay, let's get back to the caterpillar that ate the green leaf and he started to feel better. Okay, let's see what happens next. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore. Well, I guess he wasn't. All that he ate. He wasn't hungry anymore, boys and girls. And... He wasn't a little caterpillar anymore either. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He was big, boys and girls. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back. Let's go back and look at how little he was. Let's go back and see. My goodness, when he popped out the seed that day, he was just, look, let's see if we can find it. Look at that. Can we find it? Look at that. He was just, can you see it? He was just a teeny, weeny, 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 weeny. Can you see it, boys and girls? He was just a little teeny, weeny something. My goodness. Just a little teeny, weeny something. But now, after all that eating, he is a big, fat caterpillar. He's big. He's so full of food. He built him a house. And he called the house his cocoon. And he stayed inside for more than two weeks, boys and girls. And then he nibbled and he nibbled and he nibbled a hole in that cocoon. And he pushed his way on out. This was the cocoon he was in. You see it? That was the cocoon. All right. What do you think happened next? To that caterpillar when he decided to come on out of his house his cocoon after two weeks what do you think happened boys and girls he became let me show you he became a beautiful butterfly He went in 
to his house called the Cuckoo. Look at this. And he stayed in there for two weeks. But when he came out, nibbled his way out, he became a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Do you see all the colors on him, boys and girls? I see red and blue. I see yellow and green. I see purple and orange. The end. And that's the end of The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carley. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that story, boys and girls, as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Now, you know, like I said, uh, Miss Magnolia, you know her as Miss Noya. That's my cousin. And uh, she she asked me to do an announcement for it. Look like every time she do invite me to read, she asking me to do something for her on here. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, she wanted me to remind all of the boys and girls that are a part of the Blossoming Word Book Club. Don't forget to fill out your questionnaires and be prepared for discussion time when the Zoom private meeting will take place. Now, she didn't tell me when that was going to be. I'm, I'm guessing she's going to announce to you all when that meeting is going to be. But she wanted me to remind you, don't forget to answer all seven questions in the questionnaire and be prepared to discuss, okay? And uh, she asked me to hold up the book to remind you because the book that the club is reading right now is, is All Because You Matter. That's the name of the book by Tammy Charles. All Because You Matter. That's the book that you are supposed to be reading. Okay, now some of you may not know that Blossoming Word has a book club and the name of the book club is called The Blossoming Spikes. And I said to my cousin, you know, Miss Miss Noya, that's my cousin. I said, well, what kind of name is that for a book club? B Blossoming Spikes. She said that the children, the boys and girls of the club, they decided on that name. And she told me that that name, Blossoming Spikes, means flourishing, growing, and becoming sharper in literacy. I said, wow, that's a good name. Now it makes sense to me. Blossoming Spikes, flourishing, growing, and becoming sharper in literacy. Now, uh, I, she did ask me, to, to go ahead and just in case if you lost your questions, question number one, was the book a thumbs up or a thumbs down? And she's talking about that book I just held up all because you matter. That's question number one. Was the book a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Meaning, did you like it? Oh, you didn't like it, boys and girls. Question number two, would you have given the book a different title? If yes, what would your title of the story be? Question number three, have you read any other books by this author? The author of this book is Tammy Charles. Have you read any other books by Tammy Charles? other than all because you matter. She wants you to be prepared to tell the group. Question number four. What stood out to you the most about this story? What just stood out to you boys and girls and just jumped out at you that you enjoyed about this story the most? Be prepared to talk about it in the Zoom meeting. Question number five. Did you like the ending of the story? Or would you have ended it differently? If you're thinking, I would have ended it differently, be ready to tell them how you would have ended the story differently, boys and girls. 
Question number six. Why do you think the author wanted to write the story? Be ready to share that. And question number seven. Or actually, it's not a question. She said it's a statement. She says, complete this sentence about yourself. I am. And then you just give the sentence of what you want to say about yourself. For example, let me try. I am a fine person. That's my sentence. I just believe people would enjoy hanging out with me. They would have a lot of fun. I am a fun person. That's my statement. What is your statement about who you are, boys and girls? Well, be prepared to share all of that when she announces the time for your book club meeting. Okay, Blossoming Spikes? Well, boys and girls, that's my time. I have enjoyed this time with you today. Keep reading, boys and girls, and becoming stronger in literacy. And have a good weekend. And I hope my cousin get me to come and read again for you next time. Bye-bye.